complex illusion. The secret is in the cabinet. There are some hidden panels that conceal the girl and her flowers. Before the trick begins, the girl folds up the side panel plus the panel in the floor and climbs in. She covers her legs with the floor panel and flips down the side panel so she can't be seen. As we can see, the curtain hides the fact that the right side of the box is much wider than it appears, giving the girl room to hide. When the curtain is closed the first time, the girl flips open the side panel and deposits the flowers. With the curtain opened, you can see how it works. The magician opens the curtain and finds that the flowers have appeared, as if by magic. When the assistants are spinning the box the second time, the girl inside the cabinet is opening both panels and climbing into place while the team outside is drawing our attention. This is where a small, flexible assistant comes in handy. She's only got a few seconds to get settled before her appearance. Let's watch with the curtain opened. She's got to be very agile and very fast. She also can't be claustrophobic. As we can see, there's barely enough space for the panel to flip down and clear her lovely legs. She gets into a seductive pose just in time for the magician to open the curtain. There she is. During the final turn, she reverses the process and climbs back into her secret compartment. From here, she's able to reach down and hand the flowers to the magician, creating the illusion that she's still in the cabinet. With the back curtain open, we can see how she flips up the side panel and reaches out with the flowers in her hand. Once he takes them from her, she flips the panel back down and is completely hidden from view. The curtain is open, and it appears that she has completely vanished. And that's how the magician makes a girl appear and disappear, while making her do all the work. Here's a simple trick that's very effective. The magician begins by showing us a length of ordinary string. and a plastic drinking straw. He feeds the string into the straw. And then demonstrates that it really goes in one side and comes out the other. bends the straw in the center and tells us to watch closely, as if we had anything better to do. He picks up a sharp hobby knife and very carefully he cuts through the straw and the string. He separates the two halves of the straw to prove that the slice has gone all the way through. magical waves something's gonna happen he lays one straw on top of the other and pulls the string miraculously it comes out in one long piece just like it started the straws go bye-bye and tug tug the string is good as new fooled us again mass man but how what are the secrets to pulling off the brain twister of cutting through the straws and string and revealing the string as good as new you're about to find out. The straw is real. So is the knife. Before the trick begins, the magician secretly uses the knife to carefully slice a long slit lengthwise in the straw. See? He can open the straw and show you inside. But he never lets the audience see this. The slit is the first secret. The magician feeds the string into the straw. Yes, it's really going inside. He bends the straw in half. And when he tugs on both ends of the string at the same time, it pops out through the slit and will be concealed by his fingers. There's the string. And here's how he covers it up. 
Now, he takes the knife, cuts through the straw, and presumably the string. In reality, the string is safe and sound below the blade. See, it is still fed through the two remaining ends of the straw. With his finger covering the string, it looks like two separate pieces hanging from inside the straw. The magician then stacks the straws, being careful not to let the middle of the string show, as it does here. He pulls the end of the string, and it easily slides out in one long piece. He discards the pieces of straw so they can't be examined, and turns all eyes to the undamaged string. It's in one piece, thanks to the secrets. Up next, after a century of silence, one of Houdini's most famous escapes will be exposed at last. Plus the secrets behind a beloved classic trick. Then find out how to make a line of sexy chorus girls disappear. And we solve the incredible mystery as to how street magicians perform amazing outdoor levitation. The masked magician will now attempt to perform one of Harry Houdini's most famous escapes. The one that was once promoted with the slogan, failure means a drowning death. The magician displays a large milk can that's been filled with water. This particular can has a bulletproof plate glass window, an aftermarket addition, so that we can see what the magician is up to once he's inside. His beautiful assistants remove the lid, and I think you can guess what's going to happen next. The magician steals his courage and squeezes into the can of water. In Houdini's day, shipping milk in these large metal barrels was commonplace. So milk cans weren't out of the ordinary. However, attempting to escape from one filled with water was quite an unthinkable act. It's a tight fit, but he manages to fit his arms inside and force himself down. The water cascades to the floor. It's real, all right, and wet. Step back, ladies. The magician will take a few deep breaths before he can plunge all the way into the can. That mask isn't helping matters either. He'll test his ability by trying to hold his breath in this very intimidating can. Try to hold your breath with him. His assistants place the metal lid in place. There he is, behind the glass. Remember what I said about drowning? It's important to remember that this is a world-class magician, and at no time should you attempt any of his dangerous tricks at home. The magician is doing a test run of his lung power, only to see how long he can last once he's really locked inside. How about you? Are you still holding your own? He seems to be doing okay, but remember, his hands will be shackled just like Houdini's were 100 years ago. It's nearly a minute now. That's about all he can take. His assistants remove the lid, and it seems like he's happy to be breathing again. Did you last as long as he did? He's shaken, but ready to go on. The extra hardware will make the escape even more death-defying. The magician willingly holds out his wrists for a pair of regulation police handcuffs. Wonder where she got those. Since Houdini was known as the handcuff king, this is only fitting. A few more deep breaths, and the magician is again ready to squirm his way back into the can. The lid is returned to its position, and this time the assistants secure it with heavy-duty padlocks. They'd better hurry. Even experienced divers would find it terrifying to hold their breath while handcuffed and locked inside a cold steel can. 
Try holding your breath again and imagine that you've got no way out. Not so easy, is it? There we see him struggling with the handcuffs. Even if he smuggled a lock pick into the can, reaching the locks on the outside would be impossible. Houdini was right. Failure could mean a drowning death. He wrestles with the cuffs for a few more seconds. Maybe he needs some privacy. His assistants raise a curtain in front of the can. By now, he's been locked underwater for more than a minute and hasn't made any progress. This is longer than he lasted the first time before he had to be let out. He must be starting to panic. Are you still holding your breath? It's been 90 seconds now and still no sign of him. The assistants better do something. Get him out of there. He's safe. What a relief. I bet even Houdini didn't have a welcoming committee like this. So how did the magician escape before drowning in the old-time milk can? Here are the secrets. First off, the handcuffs look solid, but they've been specially rigged to pop open in an instant. Cuffs like these are almost always used in underwater escapes to minimize the risk of danger. When the magician first plunges into the can, he displaces a lot of water, leaving more room for air to breathe. It's a good acting job, but in reality, he has plenty of space to move freely. The first time we see him behind the glass, we're convinced that he has to hold his breath while inside the can. But check out the lid. The dome-shaped top allows him some extra room to reach up and take a breath whenever he needs to. While we're distracted by his hands behind the porthole, his head is safely above the waterline beneath this dome. Opening the lid to put on the handcuffs only adds more drama to the escape. The lid is locked into place with real padlocks that never get open. They don't have to, because the neck of the can is surrounded by a false collar held on by these rivets. The assistants remove the rivets when they attach the locks. Here we see how easily the lid and the collar are removed. Next, the sheet is raised. The magician can see the sheet through the glass and knows that it's time to make his escape. He simply pushes up on the lid and it effortlessly pops off, locks and all. All he has to do now is climb out of the can. Once the magician is outside, he replaces the lid and stands next to the can, waiting to make his miraculous appearance. girls provide the hero's welcome and the illusion is complete up next find out how the magician makes a line of dancing girls vanish in an instant and survives a solid steel chain being pulled through